The project you just saw uses the unmodified Unity 6 engine on a 4090 GPU. Unity 6 brings a lot of improvements across the board, giving us better visual quality, enhanced realism, and improved perform performance for complex game imagery. For example, in just this one scene, we have multiple animated characters, a detailed environment, tons of VFX with dynamic six-way lighting, volumetrics, clouds, real-time shadows, and millions of blades of grass. So how did we fit all of this into the demo in real time? Let us look at some of the ways in which Unity 6 features helped us. So first, let's look at the lighting. To get high quality results, a scene will typically require different lighting setups in different parts of the scene. For example, this trench is a pretty tight space with lots of irregular surfaces for light to bounce off. But over here, we have a wide open plane where the lighting is more or less uniform. Unity 6 includes the new adaptive probe volumes feature, which automatically places light probes where they're most needed. So when I visualize the probes, you can see that the ones in the trench are much more dense than the ones out on the plane, capturing more detailed changes in the lighting. Scenario blending lets us bake different states of the lighting setups and blend between them. Here, we have separate lighting scenarios for different times of the day in the same environment. Changing the sun angle and ambient color is accomplished through real-time lighting, but the baked lighting scenarios now also allow us to change the indirect lighting to match. Next, let's look at the vegetation, the trees and grass that bring this world to life. There are more than 12 million instances of vegetation in this scene. That's a big challenge for both authoring and rendering. We used Houdini to scatter our trees and grasses, exported their basic properties into Unity as point clouds, and then used that data to create entities in DOT's ECS. Our ECS baking systems produce entities for each piece of vegetation, as well as creating imposters for clusters of vegetation that can be used at distance. So right now, we've streamed in about 8 million pieces of vegetation in the imposters. That we want to talk about in Time Ghost, that we think points to some really cool possibilities. Achieving complex deformation for something like detailed cloth movement takes a lot of computing power. So traditionally, we've had to choose between creating at a high level of fidelity or creating in real time. There are already advanced DCC solutions for authoring cloth simulations for pre-rendered offline content, like Marvelous Designer or Houdini. But bringing that level of realism and sophistication into game development has always been a challenge. So, what if we could take a large, complex data set describing cloth movement and turn it into something fast enough to run in real time and small enough to fit in memory? At its heart, this is a compression issue, a space where AI has been used to solve problems for decades. So an artist on our team created a custom AI model to approximate these high-quality deformations then apply them in real time using Unity Sentis, a package for Unity 6 that lets you bring AI models into the Unity runtime. To train our own AI model, we use DCC tools to create 2,000 frames of animation to simulate the cloth movement on our high-resolution mesh. This looked great, but the data we'd produced was over 2.5 gigabytes in size. So we processed the data to extract the character's joint orientations and the resulting vertex deformations. Then we use the machine learning framework to train our custom AI model to predict these matching pairs of inputs and outputs. Training the model took about an hour on a desktop PC. And once that was done, we had an AI model that we could run in our project with Centis to bring high quality deformations at runtime. And it was only about 50 megabytes on disk. So now our protagonist's full costume deforms in 0.8 milliseconds per frame and it looks just as good as the high-quality deformations that we computed offline. If you want to get your hands on this demo, you won't have to wait long. We'll be releasing scenes with the environment and the character using the cloth deformation you just saw. They'll be available alongside Unity 6 next month. We use a lot of our new tools and features to make Time Ghost because we want to dog food the release and push the limits of this tag. Let's see what other early adopters are doing with it.
Hi, I'm Simon Vickland, one of the co-founders of 10 Chambers. Unfortunately, I can't be with you today because we're working hard on our next delivery for our game, Den of Wolves. However, my dear friend and colleague Svante is there to guide you through a tech demo showing off what we're working on. Our upcoming game, Den of Wolves, is a four-player co-op first-person shooter heist game set in the future. Our previous game, GTFO, was developed in Unity, and we're sticking to Unity for Den of Wolves as well, but we're upgrading to Unity 6. There are many reasons why we at 10 Chambers love Unity, but I'll tell you a few. First off, we're fans of fast-running, optimized games, and the extensibility and scalability of DOTS helps us make sure that Den of Wolves runs smooth. Secondly, we like to experiment and try out different gameplay ideas. This is especially true for Den of Wolves, where we're trying to evolve what a heist game can be. Unity 6 lets us iterate quickly and freely, which we love. Thirdly, the new GPU-driven rendering technology and VFX capabilities. Chef's kiss. At 10 Chambers, we like to build a lot of our tools ourselves, but when the team at Unity showed us a scene with our assets in Unity 6, we were blown away. Now to the fun stuff, seeing it all live. Svante Vintenat will walk you through a scene in Den of Wolves to showcase how much control we have over the information sent to the GPU and just how fantastic the game looks in Unity 6. Thank you and have a great time at Unite. Applause. <laughs> In the game, also while likely getting our hands dirty with low level API later on in production. In the meantime, it's awesome to just click a checkbox to get a reduction in draw costs during the prototyping stages. One of the major benefits of using the drawer is that it also enables us to use GPU occlusion culling. Bam. As you might guess, this feature pushes occlusion calculations from the CPU to the GPU, which takes advantage of the GPU's ability to handle large amounts of data at the same time. Then there's spatial temporal post-processing, which is a mouthful, but it allows us to upscale from lower resolution to high resolutions performantly with limited loss of fidelity. And while Den of Wolves targets PC for early access, they do plan to also target console at a later time. Luckily, SDP is hardware agnostic. It works at a range of devices from mobile to console, HDRP and URP, all with a low overhead. Furthermore, supporting DirectX 12 in Unity 6 is a big and important jump for our users. Indeed, using the new DirectX 12 updates makes multi-threaded operations more efficient distributing the workload across multiple CPU cores with split graphics jobs for rendering. DX12 also supports advanced tessellation and shading techniques, so we can get even more detailed and realistic graphics. Now, Mike, let's talk about lighting. Sure. So we believe that ray tracing is absolutely crucial for our users who want to achieve the highest levels of graphical fidelity. That's why we've recently added optimizations such as solid angle culling, DirectX 12 also supports ray tracing focused hardware, such as NVIDIA's RTX GPUs. Add to that a more flexible pipeline, and we have the tools we need to create highly realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections that significantly improve the visual quality of the game. We also need a performant global illumination, but manually placing thousands of light probes requires hundreds of hours of work, and this is something we just wouldn't do. I did ask our art director about it, and he said a flat no. Instead, using the new adaptive pro volumes, or as the cool kids call them, APVs, saves us a ton of time. So as you've already seen today, APVs allow you to place an automatic geometry-driven probe volume that gives you higher quality per pixel lighting in your scene. We've also added some new debugging features. So here, I'm examining the pixels in the scene to see which probes are contributing light values so I can make adjustments as needed. There are more graphical debugging tools available, and together, they make it easier to get things exactly how you want them, while avoiding problems like artifacts and light leaking. There are many reasons why we choose Unit 6 for Denovals, and the cool thing is that they all work together efficiently. 1,000%. So working with the folks from 10 Chambers on this test scene, we were able to achieve both increased visual fidelity and a 23% performance boost so far. 
Yeah, it's been awesome to try out these features and seeing them in-game. And we've been partnering closely with engineers from Unity to provide feedback to the R&D teams who are continuously improving the tech stacks. You'll hopefully see them in action soon, and I'll see you in the Den of Wolves. Cancel the reservation. Reset the procedure. Continued neural prodding may severely damage the suspect. Reset the procedure. Yes, standing by. Inject. Hi, Mr. Bowman. Your subconscious was just spilling the beans about your recent Akajima district breaking. Let's continue. Huh. What were you hoping to find in the Nexus Sentinel? You mother... There's no use in fighting. I will get what I want. Ah, uh, so that's how you found out about our Akajima fault. What were you looking for? A key. A key to what? Yes! What's the key for? <laughs> it's not what, Mr. Bowman. It's... Who? You see, just like me, you caught here. You're caught in the den of wolves. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.